Well, hello, my friends. It's Sean Petit, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is the beauty that we're creating today. Here are the supplies that we'll be using, most of them anyway. So I'm starting on a 12 by 12 MDF board, and I'm using two um, collage packs today that will be um, available to you on sale this week. Um, some flowers and some vintage wallpaper and different things like that. So those are available to you. And the, all of the supplies will be linked um, down below in the YouTube description box. So um, I'm placing my Liquitex um, matte medium down and I'm going to get my papers down. And I'm using um, different papers. I've used this vintage wallpaper before and I love it. It's super subtle but it adds just enough pattern in the background to really add some interest and I love the color of it. Love it. Um, so again this is available in uh, one of the collage packs that'll be listed. So I'm getting all of that down with my Liquitex matte medium and then I'll cover the top and get it nice and sealed and ready for all of the layers to come. So now I'm doing what I call the pressed paper technique. I use this a lot when I want just a little bit of um, interest, texture, um, variety for the background and to kind of push that back so it's um, there, the pattern's there but not really there. So I'm using gesso on a piece of um, parchment paper. Just paint that out and then press it down and it gives me just enough, I have a lot of control um, as to where the marks will be and how light or how heavy. It gives me a little bit of pattern from the paper and the brush strokes. I just love this technique. So now I'm going to add some interest to the bottom portion, the table part of my piece. And I'm using the Mediterranean Duo stencil and some gesso and a brush and just kind of pushing it through the stencil. I'm not trying to get a perfect pattern. I really want to push up that gesso against the sides so that it leaves some raised area um, for texture. So now that that's dry, I've um, grabbed some Lucas um, acrylic paint in teal and I've just kind of watered that down. I added it, added my wet brush to it and I'm just going to do some light layers over that to really give, bring in some color that's um, different from what the flowers will be and to separate the top from the bottom. And now I'm going to use some raw umber and some glazing medium and give myself a nice glaze around the piece. I'm really darkening just the edges of the top part because I don't want the background to be too dark um, because I want those flowers to really pop and stand out. So I'm just edging kind of around the edges and I love this look. So vintage and yummy. And then I'm just gonna cover the entire bottom portion. And then when I pull that back, that texture really shows up. It's so good, so grungy, so good. So now I'm just going to sketch out my flower pot. And I did a flower pot um, for a specific meaning and I will share that story at the end. It's a good one so I hope you stick around for that. Um, but I'm just kind of roughly sketching it out so I can get an idea of where everything's going to be. I'm using again Lucas um, acrylic paints and this paint color is called terracotta so it's appropriate. <laughs> So I'm um, just going to paint that in. And it, I'm using my brush strokes in the direction that you would might naturally see some lines on that pot. And to keep that curve kind of accentuated in the pot itself. I'm adding a little bit of raw umber to it to kind of darken it up and give it some variety. So 
So I added a little bit of the Lucas paint in beige to my um, brush um, and kind of mixed it in with that terracotta just to give it some light, um, a light source where the light might be coming from. Now I'm using in the garden stencil and I'm going to use my stencils as my guide. That's my favorite saying um, because I'm getting an idea of how everything will go together and then then I'll come back and paint over everything. But this gives me my background, it gives me kind of a parameter of where the flowers will go. And I'm not thinking too hard about where I'm placing everything, except for the fact that I want some of those leaves to peek out behind the flowers. So I want to make sure I get them extended out far enough. But mainly it's for filler, to fill in the background so that it doesn't look empty um, and to add some interest to the flower pot itself. This is the Flower Gang 4 stencil. And I love this, hydrangeas are one of my favorite flowers, which is why I included it. And I love integ integrating collage elements with actual painted elements. And so that's what I'm doing today. And so I'm using this stencil and then I'll again come back over and paint over it and add interest and depth and brush strokes and all that kind of stuff. This is the uh, flower silhouette stencil and again all of the stencils that I use will be listed um, on the blog and the link to the blog is down below in the YouTube description box. This stencil, I couldn't figure out which one do I want. Um, this is the Roses and Peonies stencil. And those light, those flowers are super, super light and I'm going to darken them up. But I needed that light, I needed that contrast in the piece. So I'm making sure to have a variety of color um, with this piece and some lights and some darks and to kind of keep those lights so I, I'm spreading them around a bit so I've got some light up at the top and light down at the bottom just to keep the eye moving around the piece because there's not going to be a whole lot um, else on this piece except for the flowers themselves. All of the colors that I'll be using will also be listed as well. This is the Flower Silhouette 4 stencil. And I'm keeping in mind where my collaged um, flowers will be because I want those to really kind of be front and center. So as I'm doing this, I'm just kind of examining, okay, where do I need to bring that, that kind of orangish color in the piece? So you can see I brought it back up to the top just to kind of keep the, their, the interest in the piece. I've got those two orange flowers kind of right together, but I know that I'm going to be covering up some of those. So I wasn't too worried about it being too uh, much the same. So now I'm just coming back in and I use beige and gesso and the original color of the flowers that I um, stenciled and mix those colors together to add some variety, some highlights, some low lights, and to really give it a painterly feel. And I love using my stencils this way. <coughs> And I'm really just following the stenciled areas. I'm just going right back over 
um, the parts that I've already stenciled. So I'm not having to rethink it. I'm not um, adding anything to it really. I'm just going right back over real quick, short brush strokes to give it a real painterly feel. And I'm gonna do the same things to the leaves, add some lights and some darks using gesso and beige and the original color. So now I'm going to put down my collage elements and I'm starting with my leaves because those are going to be in the background or behind the actual flowers. And so I, you know, kind of get my idea of where they're going to be and then put those down and then I'll place the flowers over the top of them. And I tuck them under so that you, it doesn't look like they're just kind of floating uh, on the piece. So now that I've got everything down, I'm just going to come back and fuss a little bit with some of the flowers because they are too light or too dark or I need to add a little bit to them. I added one additional flower um, just to bring that kind of orange color again around through the piece. And now I'm going to shade absolutely everything with my General's Charcoal Pencil. Add some highlights, some low lights, some depth, some shadow. So I hope you enjoyed today's project and if you did, subscribe and like so that you never miss a video. and. Um, don't forget all the supplies will be listed on the blog and the link to the blog is down below in the YouTube description box. The stencils and the um, collage pack will also be on sale um, for this week. And um, I hope that you stick around for the conversation at the end. It's a good one about being authentic and being you and how much how important that is inspired by a really great quote. I can't wait to share that with you. So now I'm just going to add just a few more highlights around the piece with my um, China marker, which I love because it has really great texture and interest as you use it. Um, I, I just love the look of it. I will shade around the outside edge 
with my um, black soft pastel and I will put my word down that I printed on tissue paper. And that is it, my friends. Thank you so much. Stick around for the conversation and I will see you next week. Well, hello, my loves, and happy Sunday. Welcome back. Um, I just love this. I love the common, I love the background. Oh, yes. And then I just love the combination of um, collage elements and painted elements. It just is all the good stuff. Um, so I, the both of the collage packs that I used, there are two that I used for, um, this piece. Uh, those will be on sale uh, for this week and as well as the stencils that I used today will be also on sale for this week. And I went over everything else throughout the video. So um, the meaning of this piece. So I so I collect all, you know, I collect my stuff my inspiration stuff. And I came across this um, quote from The Velveteen Rabbit by, by Marjorie Williams Bianco, and I just love it. And it says, you become, that's period, you become. And I, I almost used that. There were so many things that I almost used in this piece from this, but you become. It's, it's, we are becoming something. Our journey is taking us to where we need to be, is teaching us um, about ourselves. It's teaching us to be authentic. It's teaching us to know ourselves. You become. It takes a long time. That's why it doesn't happen often to people who break easily or have sharp edges or who have to be carefully kept, generally, by the time you are real, most of your hair has been loved off and your eyes dropped out and you get loose in the joints and you are very shabby. But these things don't matter at all because once you are real, you can't be ugly except to the people who don't understand. I mean, I just, uh, you know, I've heard that a thousand times and that's what I love about our, our journey and about inspiration is sometimes you can come across something again that you've heard a thousand times and it suddenly is like, ah, uh, like the lights come on or it just spoke. It spoke to me in such an incredible, profound way that we are constantly become, we are becoming this this journey that we're on it's teaching us to be who we are to be real and and um the older i get and you hear it all the time the older you get the better it is the more comfortable you are in your own skin and that happens with the journey with the good with the bad and like it said um it takes a long time. That's why it doesn't happen often to people who break easily or have sharp edges. Those who um, aren't willing to learn from the journey, aren't willing to learn the lessons of who we are and how and our 
authenticity and, and being okay with being real and um, being okay with who we are. And so I just want to encourage you today to embrace the journey that you're on, like fully be okay with it, even if it's hard, even if it's downright sucks. It's giving us something. There's an underlying lesson. It's teaching us to be okay with who we are, where we are right now. And the thing is, is that the lessons that we learn in the journey, we have got to share them with other people who are are not quite where we are yet or need encouragement or whatever it is, those lessons that we learn, that realness, that um, acceptance of, of the stuff, of that you're going to make it, that it's hard but you're going to be okay, those kinds of things. We, and the lessons that we've learned on our journey to becoming, we've got to share those with other people. Our world so desperately needs it. And so, my friends, embrace all your wonderful, authentic, real self that you are. All the weird, all the quirky. And just like the quote said, you are beautiful. All that realness is beautiful. It says, because once you are real, you can't be ugly, except to the people who don't understand. And those that are struggling or those that are on the journey that are trying to be better and be calm and be all of the things that we've been work walking through will get it. The people that you surround yourself with that want the best for you and want to be real too will get it. And so surround yourself with those people. Create that place of safety where you can be real and then give other people permission to be real too because it's so so beautiful and so that's why I did the flowers I did it in the pot so that a lot of times I'll do a vase but that's usually cut stems into the vase this is in the dirt this is growing this is alive this is real this is growth happening that's why I did this it this way so loves embrace your awesome, weird, crazy, whatever it is, self, um, and be authentic with yourself and with others. Oh, we so need it. Um, all right, my loves, that is it for this Sunday. I hope you have a wonderful Sunday. I hope it's restful and peaceful and that you are learning to become your real true self and that you always, always know that you are loved.